How's it going, everybody? Rybrad here today, and I'm back with another episode of our Carolina Hurricanes franchise mode. And if you guys remember, in the last one, we did do a lot of line shuffling, uh, and it seems to have worked out pretty well. We are two points behind the Columbus Blue Jackets with a game in hand. Now, I don't think we would uh, jump them as far as I think they would have the uh, regulation and overtime winner uh tiebreaker over us but if you guys remember we didn't have a very good stretch here in the middle of the month uh but we definitely picked it up against the metropolitan division here and that's probably the best thing that i can say uh about last month now it did bring us back down to earth we were off to a flying start and had we not have that uh say we just won half of the games that we lost on our losing streak what is that one two three four five six seven eight game like we would we would be 16 3 and 5 which or 16 you know 16, you know, four and two, I don't know, something like that. We would have a lot of wins and a lot of points. Uh, we would be probably one of the NHL's elite teams. Now, I don't think we are an elite team in the NHL, as we do seem to be a top team, but there do seem to be a lot of teams right around our amount of points. And right now, the Metropolitan Division is one of the weaker divisions. So I will take that and run with it the best that we can. Uh, so the lines that we did end up settling upon was Feshnikov, Teravainen, and Stone, Rask, Broussard, Aho, Wilson, Stahl, Sherry, Gauthier, Nikash, and Brock McGinn. Uh, we're leaving Walmart and Connolly Scratch. Now, I did see uh, Demko actually suggested to trade away uh, Brett Connolly, but he's listed as a depth forward, so he's not going to be upset about not playing because uh, he knows exactly that that is his role, that when someone gets hurt, he gets to play, uh, and when the team is healthy, he's just going to sit the bench or maybe come in if we need uh, just to shake it up a little bit. But here is the defensive pairing. Nothing different here. Uh, Fleury's looking good. Uh, Roland McEwen is now in the top six there. Minus three, not great. Kelvin Hunt's also a minus three. Fleury's a minus three. Yeah, the team's a minus, and like I said, I think it is our special team's that is kind of carrying us right now. I really do like this second line of Aho, Rask, and Svechnikov. Uh, the first line is Stone, Broussard, and Teravainen. Now, we did pl pay Broussard $6.5 million, and he's now being used as a second-line center at the age of 32. Uh, only gave him three years, so he'll be 35. May want to move on from him in a few years if he does not turn out to be the guy for us. But uh, the guy that I am hoping is the guy of the future for us is right down there on the fourth line. Uh, Martin Nikash. He's got that medium elite potential. He's already playing the NHL. He's having a good season. He's got six points in 24 games on the fourth line. So I honestly can't ask for a better season. I would like to see his penalty minutes uh, lessened a bit. Uh, but a pl plus three is fine with me. Although I do think plus minus is a little outdated for uh, judging players. It's the best I can do without actually being able to watch the games here. Now, I don't think I'm going to bother checking the trade block until the end of this video. As we will probably get up to the trade deadline uh, here in year number two, see where we're at. Maybe I don't shake it up this year like I did uh, last year. So we're probably going to go uh, three months here because we are at the end of November. So December, January, February, most of February anyway, because I think uh, actually the trade deadline's in... Uh, oh, no, there it is. It's at the end of February there. Uh, so yeah, we will probably get up to, you know, past this Boston game, leaving ourselves three games to go ahead and really get to know somebody. Uh, maybe a week beforehand even so that we don't uh, mess up too much or we're able to scout a, a guy if we do actually want him. But I don't know if I want to make too many changes like I did last year. Of course, it all depends on who's on the trade block. If we can get that first line center and, you know, we're in one of the divisional spots, I can get a top, top center with, uh, you know, some fantastic, so just fantastic stats. And the guy that, we're, the, one of the guys that we're looking for, you know, uh, maybe from a team like the Anaheim Ducks. Now, I don't really, w I wouldn't want a guy like Kessler, but if we just take a quick look uh, throughout the NHL, I'm not going to go too far uh, through the entire NHL, but I would like to get a first line center. If somebody's tr selling at the trade deadline here, uh, like a guy like Zetterberg, although he's not actually there in real life, again, two years, not exactly what I'm looking for. A guy like Connor McDavid, when they put him on the trade block, you know, um, oh wow, this guy seems Heponiemi. Heponiemi seems actually pretty good at decent overall and uh, pretty good potential. So I don't know if I'm 100% sure on that one, but like I said, guys. I'm just going to check that out later in the video towards the end of it. But let's go ahead here, see how we simulate more with these lines, see if we can, uh, you know, keep keep up our, our, our record here. We're doing pretty well. Uh, as far as compared to the rest of the NHL, we're not uh, tremendous, but it does seem that when we lose, we are getting points. We are getting a point anyway. Uh, and when we win, we're beating the Metro. So I'd like to lose and get a point and beat the Metro. That's like, I, I feel like that's a recipe for success in the Metro anyway. Uh, we got a couple games... 
Uh, the Devils there. We got the Blue Jackets, Washington, the Blue Jackets again. So not a lot of Metropolitan Division opponents in this month, but let's see. Uh, okay, so yeah, those are just RFAs who haven't uh, actually signed. Connor Sherry is out with a sore knee. I'm just going to have the assistant coach replace him with Brett Connolly because he's on that third line there. Back-to-back uh, -back losses, still not doing great as far as anybody else besides our own division. And we lose again. Okay, that's four straight losses. Can we beat Florida? I just want to see, can we beat Florida if we don't beat Florida? Oh, we do beat Florida. I still think I'm going to make some line changes. Although, I don't want to I don't want to shuffle it all uh, and, uh, and just screw with our chemistry. Kind of let these guys build on what they're doing. Although, we are such a big, big old fat minus, guys. It's, it's horrendous. Um, I don't know what to do, honestly. Maybe, uh, putting, putting Rask there and Teravine and Broussard and Aho as our second line. Svechnikov, Rask, Stone. We'll try it. I don't know. I feel like I need a two-way forward on that first line. I would like a playmaker, but like I said, we don't really have a luxury uh, of, uh, 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 of centermen in the, in the organization right now. I just wish we had that top line center, and that's what I'm trying to build for. I'm going to edit lines manually here, put Connor Sherry back in. Uh, where did they put... Oh, they put Walmart in instead. Okay. So they put Walmart in there. Oh, nope. Back. We want to put Connor Sherry, who's actually been good for us this year. Uh, he's still a plus three. He's got, uh, nine points in 20 games. He's playing second and third line, middle six, uh, minutes, essentially. Versus Columbus, we get a win, and we do beat the Red Wings. So there's three straight wings wins. We lose to the Capitals, which isn't great, but can we beat Detroit again? We beat them 8 to nothing, and we get a point out of Tampa, who's always a fantastic team. Columbus, we lose to them again, so maybe our magic against the Metro is running out just a little bit, or maybe that was just a little bit in the preseason before everyone hit their stride, and Sebastian Ajo is out with a sore foot. Oh, man. Um, I'm going to just hit best lines and see what they suggest here. Rask, Teravine, and Stones, Svechnikov, Broussard, Sherry, uh, Wilson, Stahl, Connolly, Gautier, Nikash, who's up to an 80 now, enlisted as a third line scoring forward, uh, and McGinn. So Nikash has already grown to an 80. I don't know if that's just because of his morale or what, uh, but I wouldn't mind maybe flipping him with Connolly there. We'll leave everything as is for now. A 4 nothing win against Tampa, and then a shootout loss there against the St. Louis Blues. So at the end of December... 17, 13, and 7, so we are starting to drop a few more games than we win, which isn't fantastic, but I'm happy with the, you know, recent performances since those line changes. I think we're above 500. That's four wins, two losses, and two overtime losses, four, two, and two. I'm going to take that uh, every day of the week because we got two points plus the four wins and only two regulation losses, so uh, I'm satisfied with that. Let's get up here past this Boston game so I can maybe assess how the team is performing because I'm using a very small windows to assess my team performance right now. We win in a shootout there after taking a 1-0 loss. That one kind of stings. Sebastian Ajo is fully healed and ready to play in the next game. So I'll best lines it. See where they have Rask zone. Yep, I'm okay with these lines. Uh, very okay with that. Sherry's back down there. Yeah, I'm okay with this. I think Rask is just going to be fine on that first line center. He was not bad there last year. Uh, and so far, three straight wins. We lose to Buffalo, but we do beat the uh, New Jersey Devils. Uh, lost to the Winnipeg Jets, who are very, very good. We do beat the St. Louis Blues. Losing a shootout, but we do pick up a point there against the New York Rangers. Beating the Colorado Avalanche three to zip. Um, and they've released their latest draft class rankings. Now, versus Vancouver, we lose, but we do beat Boston. So, 24-17-8 and eight is a lot. That's a lot better than how we were. I believe we went, uh, during that stretch, we went 7-4-1, and one, maybe? Um, I'm not going to bother going back and counting, but uh, actually, no, we lost two, two games, three games. I yeah, no, 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 yeah, I was right, I was right. Uh, there's that fourth loss there. So 24, 17, and 8. We are getting a lot of uh, points, which is good. But I really feel like we're going to be in this battle for the wild card spot uh, almost through the entire season. I don't expect us to be a top team in the Metro. But so far, so good. I am happy with it. Mark Stone is now uh, leading the team in points. I think Victor Rask is going to be okay up there uh, on the first line. Uh, it seems to be helping out Stone. I'm okay with that. Uh, we got a big week off here, so we're going to get into February just to start February here. I'll see how we just finish out the month of January. Can we get a win? It would look a lot nicer if we do beat the Edmonton Oilers. That was the all-star break. We lose in the shootout, so we're picking up a point. But again, guys, I'm not too satisfied with just keeping uh, keep getting these overtime losses. I mean, 
They're 20, 30, and 1, so they don't lose much uh, in extra time, where we seem to lose a lot in extra time, but not a lot in regulation. But if you look at the two records, they're somewhat similar. We only have four more wins. Uh, if you're just going to pile all the losses together, which I'm going to say I'm doing, we're 26, or we're 24 and 26, which is not good enough to be a playoff team. You need your just straight up wins to be better than your combined losses and overtime losses. But I'm okay with the point because we use a point system, not just a straight up win system. So I'm okay with it. Uh, let's go ahead and get past this, um, this San Jose Sharks game here a week before the trade deadline. I don't know if I want to do too much to the line changes. Mark Stone seems to be leading the team in points. We're still in a playoff spot only uh, because, I mean, we're it's tight. It's tight. Besides the Pittsburgh Penguins, this division is tight. Uh, and it's seemingly, it's going to be a race between us and the rest of the Metro. Because the Montreal Canadiens there, I mean, I know we're only three points behind them. Uh, but I'd rather, if we're going to pick up three points, we would be second in our division here. So... I think I just want to focus on the Metro. We need to get one of those Metro divisional spots. I'd really not like to get a wild card spot because we're going to be the second wild card team. We're going to, either going to play Tampa probably or Pittsburgh. And neither of those are favorable matchups for us to start off the year. We're going to start off our first postseason appearance. Charlotte, uh, I'll do best lines down there. Charlotte, uh, best lines down there. Uh, and we lose to Buffalo. Not great. We lose to the Ducks. Also not great. Versus Dallas, we lose again. And we are now 24 uh, 20 and 9. That is, that is not good. We need to pick up some wins here. Uh, Capo Caco has been injured with a mild concussion. That's not what I wanted to see. Versus Montreal there. Uh, they want to give us Chris Kreider for Calvin DeHaan and a third. I do like Chris Kreider. I feel like he's going to be a good simulator. Now, I, he does not have, uh, exact elite. I don't think he's got exact elite. I'm pretty sure he's just in a top six forward potential, but not willing to give up DeHaan and a third. I mean, the contract situation alone would be nice because we get to, uh, you know, have a little bit more flexibility. But I like I like DeHaan on this team, and I feel like I want him to stick around. Plus, giving up the third for a guy that I'm not too keen on bringing in anyway uh, would be just silly. So, 27, 21, and 9. If we can win these two games, I'll be pretty happy. Uh, we win one, lose one, win one in the shootout, though. That's not going to help us as far as tiebreakers. But 28, 22, and 9 is good enough for out of the playoffs. So, we are three points out of a divisional spot, and that's the thing that keeps killing me. We are so close to a division, and like I said, guys, the Montreal Canadiens, the, the Atlantic is so much better than the Metro right now. I mean, they're, I know they're only four points ahead of us, but they have two games in hand. Uh, so, I sh I'm just going to only focus here on the Metropolitan Division. But, Stone seems to be doing well, uh, seems to be putting up a decent amount of points. He's going to have about 47 and 60, uh, so you can probably tack on... Uh, maybe 60 and 80, so 62, that would be our leading point getter, which isn't great. I just, we don't have anybody who's going to get a ton of points right now, and the trade deadline's fast approaching. I really want to stop this, uh, this streak of missing the playoffs, guys, so I'm going to take a look at the, uh, the trade, trading block, see who wants to, wow, the Ducks really bounced back this season, so who wants to get rid of who, we will see. They don't want to get rid of anybody. I do, I would like to see, uh, center's uh, that are NHL caliber on the block here, maybe, maybe making a blockbuster, but I really do feel like centers are where we need to improve, uh, big time. We don't know anything about any of them. Henrik Zetterberg's still an option. I just don't like at the age of 39, two years left at 5.77. He's still fine at 85, but still, it's just not the kind of guy that I, I want to bring in for a rental. Now, You've got Koivu here, who's got only one year left on his deal. He is an 84. He's still exact top six, so he would come in, just be another solid center depth option, but 84 overall, we have that in Broussard. We've got Stahl. We've got Rask. I mean, uh, Kotkiemi, uh, Kotkiemi is on the block, actually, guys, so that's interesting that the Montreal Canadiens are willing to part with their top pick. Taylor Hall is on the trade block. Are you kidding me? He's going to be a free agent, and maybe he doesn't want to re-sign um, in uh, in, in New Jersey, but man, oh man, I didn't think I would see Taylor Hall on the trade block. I don't know. Uh, Tevu Teravainen wanted out of this team and Taylor Hall is pretty good. Uh, I'm just going to take a look at it guys. Don't, don't scream at the screen right now. I'm just going to take a look. Oh my God. Yeah, no. Uh, they actually don't want him. They want Capo Caco, who's now up to a 77 already. My God, this guy has grown very nicely. 
Uh, and so far, he, he's looking great. Svechnikov hasn't grown a ton. He's a minus 12. He's got mm, 34 points in about 60 games. Uh, Nikash here, I'm not willing to get rid of him. He is a 79, so it was only thanks to his... Uh, you know what? I may want to play him on that third line. Uh, Stone, Aho, probably not. Tevu Taravainen. Wow, if nobody wants him, I guess. All right, so... The Taylor Hall dream, probably not going to come true unless I give up a lot. Uh, maybe that franchise goaltender. W excuse me. Matthew Bartzell is on the trade block. And while I know he's going to ask for a huge salary increase, the kid is fantastic. He's put up 40 points in 60 games. Um, he's, I don't think he's an 89. I know he's, I know he's elite. I know this kid is elite. But the question is, what is his overall? Would I be getting fleeced? Should I send out one of my scouts, just manually override it, and send somebody out to scout Bartzell? That would be a huge trade to go after a uh, uh, Bartzell there. Um, nobody here, as far as I want, would want. Ottawa doesn't want to give up anyway. Uh, Philadelphia Flyers is fine. Man, that Bartzell deal, though. He's on the block, which makes me think I have a chance of getting him. Robert Thomas there is actually a very good prospect. I'm surprised they're willing to part with him. Uh, Austin Matthews is not on the block. Uh, Nisimov, no thanks. Paul Stastny, but I don't think he's an 86. I really don't. Uh, we would have to scout him, but I really don't think uh, he's an 86. The Winnipeg Jets have cop on the block. But really, the ones that interest me were Taylor Hall, but more importantly, the New York Islanders want to get rid of Matthew Bartzell. If I throw him on this trade block, I would definitely have to give up my first round pick. There's no way they're leaving here without my first. And that barely puts a dent in it. We'd have to give up somebody ridiculous. Uh, to go ahead and go through with this deal. We could give up Nikash. I mean, we could. He's 21. He's 79. I know he's good. He's uh, he's growing for us. He's playing for us in the uh, in the NHL. But a guy like Nikash and a first... Oh, man. We could get Matthew Bartzell and maybe even, like, um, a second back. Uh, or not even give up a first. That's really even. I would have to throw in maybe a little bit more. How do you guys feel about next year's? They want next year's second. Uh, that's close. I don't think it would go through. I'd probably have to give up a little bit more. But knee cash in a second for Bartzell. I mean, guys, Bartzell is an elite talent. He's already put up 40 points. He's on the first line. Put him with some, some, some talent around him like we've got. Uh, like Mark Stone on his wing there. I mean, what is he playing with here in New York? Uh, I want to see what he's probably playing with as far as forward partners. It's not this guy, but this Yu Zabenejad, Ulf Zabenejad, looks really good. When did they draft this guy? Uh, 2019, third overall. Okay, so that was just past year. Josh Bailey, they did win the Matt Duchesne sweepstakes. I do remember that. Uh, but I can't believe they want to give up Bartzell, man. I am telling you what, that could be one hell of a trade. I know Nikash is our guy. He's 2179 for one year older. We could get, you know, I'm thinking he's going to be an 87, 86 maybe, but an elite talent here in Matthew Bartzell. I'm pretty sure he's got elite potential. Like, I, unless something wicked happened, uh, I'm pretty sure. I mean, he had 56 points last year. He's on pace to top that, I think. Uh, yeah, he's on pace to get 60 this year. Doesn't, uh, does, does score, he's scoring on a lot of his shots. He seems to be a really consistent 20 goal scorer, though. I'll tell you what, uh, if we want a guy to get goals, it's Matthew Bartzell. And he, what is he listed as? He's probably a playmaker. We're not too sure about that. Um, ooh, we'll do whatever it takes to win or be on a winning team, but lacks loyalty. Uh, he, I don't think he's got an extension, uh, pending availability. He is signed. So wait, wait, wait. Does he have an extension already penned? Uh, with them. He does at two years, five and a half million. That is a great bridge deal for a guy like Bartzell. Oh my God, this trade could be the one that sends this franchise into a frenzy and just makes us one of those. Uh, oh man. I'm just thinking about the possibilities of playing, you know, Svechnikov on the wing with Bartzell or Aho, Bartzell, and Stone. That's a legit first line. Then you've got uh, Broussard or Rask. Uh, Teravainen and Svechnikov, that's a legit second line, and that just, our center depth goes through the roof. Now, I, I know we have to give up one of our best prospects here in Nikash, but I don't know if he's going to keep growing. 
Bartzell's already way above this dude, and are we going to think that Nikash is going to grow six points in one year? Because if Bartzell turns out to be an 85, I'll still think it's going to be a win. Because if Nikash turns out to, you know, not be as good... I mean, I don't think he will. So, think about it this way, guys. Nikash would have to grow six points in one year to equal Bartzell's uh, overall. Six points in one year, and that's without Bartzell... Uh, you know, growing. Bartzell would, is a year older, and I get it, but he's got that two-year, five and a half million dollar extension. So I would not have to worry about that uh, per se. Uh, knee cash in a second for Bartzell could just go through. It could be crazy enough that it might work, guys. I know the team might not be happy with trading a guy like knee cash, but I bet you what they're going to be ecstatic that we're going to bring in such an elite talent like uh, Matthew Bartzell. Oh man, I'm I'm just checking out our contract situation and what it's gonna be like, guys. This could this could be great. Falk does need an extension. We have 11 million. All expiring is Falk. Shiri, Shiri. Hopefully we could. Ah, he doesn't even want to be back. Walmart. We got Wad still there too. Uh, goalies. We're fine down there. Nobody's expiring as far as goaltenders. The only guy we have to sign is Falk, and he wants an. Ex he does want an extension. Uh, for five years, I guess I could, get, I, I could do five years, uh, five years at five million. I feel like that would be a good extension there for Justin Falk, but man, this guy on the trade block is just insane. I, I, I just, I, I, I'm still thinking about what it could be, what was, okay, so let's do, I gotta breathe, I gotta slow down, guys, I am hype about it, I haven't even gone through the trade, and I haven't ever asked you guys right now. Should we go through with this deal? I'm going to pop a card up, but should I do this deal? I might have put the card up already. I don't know. I'm going to edit this afterwards, obviously. <laughs> but, okay, okay, okay. Slow down. Take a breather. Let's take a look at the lines. So we would be losing out on Nikash. Medium Elite, 21. That's a great player. He's listed as a third line scoring forward. Bartzell is instantly our first line center. He goes next to Tevu Teravine in there, who's listed as a second line forward. So maybe I move Aho up there, who's also listed as a second line forward. I give Gava Aho the deal, though. And then Rask could move, I guess. Rask is a second line forward. Stahl's a third line forward. So it would be something like, like this. And then you see Bartzell up there. Then you uh, Bartzell, Aho, Stone, Teravine, and Broussard, Svechnikov. Wilson, Rask, Sherry, McGinn, Stahl, Gautier. Um, yeah, I would like that. I would like that a lot. Our center core instantly gets ridiculously deep. A uh, guy like Broussard, I would want... I'm... Mm, he could be a guy that goes back if we need more. Uh, let's see. Would they want Broussard? Now, I wouldn't... I don't want to really ruin the chemistry, though. That's the one thing about chemistry is that I want to make sure that I don't screw up the locker room too much. Uh, if we take a look at our player morale right now, do we have a team meeting or any players want to meet? Uh, we're currently at 71%. So if I take a look at Nikash here, uh, Gautier, Teravainen, McGinn, Svechnikov. Those guys would all be kind of distraught and kind of upset that I traded Nikash away. But I think it could be offset Lost, lost more out because of recent individual performance. Yeah, this, our, our offense is just so stag stagnant, guys. I just think this is the kind of deal that I should make. Or, 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 or. Don't call me crazy, but we could also give up Capo Caco, but who's already better than Nikash. I'm not going to give up Svechnikov's because Svechnikov is 83 at 19, which is just glorious. Uh, Capo Caco is 77 at 19, and in the AHL, he's put up 30 points in 54 games. Now, I don't know exactly where he's playing down there in the AHL, but... So let's go back to the New York Islanders. Um, what would they be willing uh, to take from us? So, skaters matching the block. They, Svechnikov, Caco, Nikash are all options. I don't probably don't want to give up Stone. He's 27. He, he's in his prime. He's got, he's on a, I think, a very solid deal. Goalies matching the block, so they don't want any of our goalies. I don't blame them. Uh, Nicholas Waugh here, but he's not going to be—he's not going to be enough to get it done. Plus, if they're going to give up their best center and just go full out blow it up rebuild, I would probably have to give them a future cornerstone here and Nikash. Now, I don't think Nikash is a future cornerstone, which is why I'm willing to get rid of him. 
And I know this has been a really long-winded, but you guys are just hearing out my process. So I would give up knee cash and a second next year. Um, and then get Bartzell, who's their best player. Just hands down, Bartzell. They're 19-31-9. and nine. Um, that's, That seems about even value. If anything, I would have to give a little bit more. I'm... It's hard to see. I wish I wish it was easier to way to like stack it, uh, or like show a bar left or right, like within the middle. So like you, if you guys hear what I'm saying, like underneath the five, there's a bar, and whoever the trade is favoring, go that way. But if it's in the middle, make it in the middle. If it's slightly one way, if it's slightly the other way, I think that would be a lot easier than this. Plus, each player you could still use the trade value thing anyway. Knee cash in a second for Bartzell sounds too good to pass up. Plus, I might want to give them mm, uh, maybe just a, a young prospect. Somebody who I haven't signed, like Erickson here. He's a low top six. Uh, that would pro that would almost definitely... I'm almost positive that would go through. I, ca I can't tell if I'm reading it right as far as the bottom there. Plus, I don't know exactly know Bartzell's trade value just because we're not 100% sure about his scouting. Now, I wish my scouts would have done a better job. I can also wait another week, uh, but mm, this trade right here, guys, I'm going to leave this one up on the screen for you guys. Is this the kind of trade that I should do? Do you want to see me go through with this trade? I personally think I would do this trade if I was doing my own without, uh, you know, off stream or off stream, off, uh, off camera, but I mean, this trade could potentially you know vault us into a solid playoff position and we might even win a playoff series who knows i'm thinking a little too far ahead though because last time i traded for made a blockbuster trade at the um deadline it didn't work so i'm hesitant to say yes but i'm also not because bartzell is such an upgrade over knee cash they're both elite uh, he's got a pretty good deal coming up. Um, plus, it's only a second next year. We would probably have to still find a way to get a second this year or just say screw it and not have a second this year. Uh, second round picks to me aren't as important. Uh, and then Erickson there just to sweeten the deal, just a touch. I like this trade. Personally, I like it. I would do it. But I want to hear your guys' thoughts. Let me know down in the comment section. Should I go through with this trade? Do you guys want to see me just keep the core as is? Or do I go through with this trade? Let me know your thoughts, guys. I I need, I need kind of need some help here. Because I, I want to do it. But I want to hear what you guys' uh, thoughts are on this trade. But make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed this episode. Subscribe if you want to see some more. Turn that bell on so you get notified. So you know what my decision was on this potential blockbuster trade. And I will see you guys in the next one.